Today I'm going to talk about dictation and give you some tips for the radiology resident. Um, the reason why this is so important is because dictation is a topic that is rarely touched upon in radiology. In fact, you may dictate hundreds of thousands of reports during your career and it's possible that you may not have actually gone over with your dictations with other folks. Uh, and you don't know how you're actually doing because dictations are the end result of the product that you're producing as a radiologist. And so it's really important to understand how dictations work and what you need to do in order to create a great dictation. There's a very steep learning curve at the very beginning for the radiology resident. You're sure to learn the basics of, of dictation, but the problem is, is that to become really, really good at dictation, it takes years and years of experience to actually fine tune what you originally learned at the beginning. What are the differences between an attending's dictation and a resident's dictation? Well, a resident's dictation tends to be more verbose, contains more impertinent findings, and is generally harder to figure out what is going on. An attending's dictation, on the other hand, tends to be much more focused and relevant without a lot of the extraneous information that a resident may put in their dictation. For some residents, it is assumed that you're going to learn how to dictate by osmosis. But the truth is, it's really good to have a basic understanding of how to dictate. So today I'm going to give you some guidelines for each part of the dictation, starting with the history, the technique, the comparisons, the comments, and the impression. And I'm also going to talk about the use of structured and prose dictations briefly. But first, I'm going to start to talk about templates. When I first started dictating, I remember we had a book of templates at my residency program to help us to choose some of the best templates for dictation. Nowadays, it's a little bit more complicated because many residencies have a transcription program like PowerScribe and may have many, many different sorts of templates. My advice to you is to try to stick to one template and go with that one because you want to basically remember the format of how to dictate and it's very confusing when you see lots of different types of templates. Consistency is the key in this situation. Even as an attending, templates are still very useful. I currently use them as a reminder of what is needed within a dictation. It's almost like a checklist, so I don't forget things in general. But you still have to be very careful. There are certain pitfalls with a template. You have to be extra careful not to send out a report without changing some of the topics within the template. For instance, it may have in your template the kidneys are normal, and you may say in somewhere in the dictation that there is a mass within the kidney. Well, if you leave the statement kidney is normal and send that out to the clinicians, it's going to make a very confusing dictation, and you'll probably get a phone call asking why does it say the kidney is normal when you say there is a mass. So be very sure to double check your work twice when you use a template for that reason. All right, so let's start with the actual report itself. So the history and priors. What needs to be placed in the history have has really significantly changed over time. I remember when I first started, it could be a one word phrase. Nowadays, you really have to be much more detailed in the history because you may not even get reimbursed for the study unless you have as much relevant data as possible. In addition, there's all sorts of regulation and accreditation bodies that regulate the reports. When I first started, I remember I was frowned upon to put the age of a patient in the dictation. Now for some of our reports for cardiac nuclear medicine, the accreditation body won't accredit it, us if we don't put the age in there. So things have changed dramatically and it's very important to put as much data as, as you can that is relevant. In addition, more history can be very helpful for the clinician as well as to answer the clinical question. It's also important to put relevant information from the histories in this section. Don't put that in the body of the report. It's really not the place for the history and can confuse what's on the present study and what was happening in the history. You can refer to the history from the body of the report, but keeping the history in the body is not such a good idea. Okay, uh, what about the technique section? Well, I like to say that the technique section is the stepchild of the dictator report. It's rarely ever looked at and no one really tends to care about that much, but in fact, it could be very important and there's some very relevant information for the radiologists that are looking at the study, the old study at the time. Uh, for instance, it's possible that you may have a dictation where you say there were five millimeter helically acquired slices in the study. That 
data may become very relevant. And the reason why is because it's possible that the next study may have two millimeter slices. So if you don't see something on your current study, it's possible that it really was there, but it may not have been seen because the slice thickness was not thin enough. That's one example of how a technique section can be important on occasion. So make sure the section is correct and try not to ignore this. Also, don't assume that the technique is correct if you're using a template. Always make sure to check that. Many times I look back at the technique section that a resident has sent out for a report and it's oftentimes wrong and that could be important. So be very careful when sending this information out. What about the next section, comparisons? There's some variability in the placement of the section. I tend to put this at the beginning of the findings in the report. Other people put it in other sections. Regardless, it's important to put it in a, in a place such that the clinician will understand that you're comparing one study to the other study so that you can just refer to that in the body of the report. And so that's really important. That way the reader will always know what you're referring to. The next section, the comment section, this is the place where the radiologist can go to town. This is the section that's dedicated to radiologists and for other radiologists to look at. You want to be dis detailed and specific, especially as a radiology resident. You want to describe the findings well, put in things like location, size, morphology, density, and so on. If it's an important fi finding, it's a good idea to put also the slice number into the dictation. It makes it much easier for other attendings to figure out what you're looking at, especially in the case of the subtle. One thing that oftentimes will confound the resident is whether or not to put the differential in the comment section or only in the impression section. I usually, what I usually do is I will put the entire differential into the comment section and I will usually put the most relevant impressions in the impression section. And so that's how I usually work it because you really want to put in what you think is the most likely diagnosis into the impression because that's what you want the clinician to work up further. Once again, be careful using templates because you can easily create inconsistencies that shouldn't be there since they may be already present in the template itself. And finally, let's talk about the impression. The impression is the most important section of the dictation. This is the final product. This is what we're reporting to the clinician. The clinician oftentimes ignores the rest of the port and goes right to the impression. So you want to be concise. You want to be relevant. What you say needs to make sense in this portion. Don't use technical jargon in this report. The bane of radiologist's existence is getting extraneous phone calls, wasting one's time. I can assure you, if you put lots of terms that clinicians might not know into the section, you are going to get lots of phone calls and waste your time. In addition, the impression should contain the most relevant conclusions. Um, one of the examples would be in the comments section, you can put a whole entire description about a mangioma, which would be a hypervascular well-circumscribed mass in segment six, measuring X centimeter with some peripheral nodule enhancement. On the other hand, the impression would just say hypervascular segment hepatic mass, consider most likely hemangioma, correlate with abdominal MRI. So that's the difference between the comments and the impression. It's really a concise, short explanation of what was going on previously in the report. So what terms are most frowned upon within the impression? Avoid the use of cannot be excluded. This phrase often leads the clinician to unnecessary workup for things that are not relevant. In addition, don't use the term clinical correlation is recommended. That is our role as radiologists, and you certainly don't want to state the obvious. There are other particular terms that some radiologists like and others don't. Just make sure to listen to the radiologist that you're dictating for. In the end, it's their dictation, not yours. And briefly, I'm going to mention structured reporting dictation versus prose dictation. I'm just going to summarize by saying there's a great article from radiology called Structured Reporting, Patient Care Enhancement or Productivity Nightmare. Go back and take a look at that. The URL is on the post. I'd like to conclude by saying that learning the basic mechanics of dictation is a rapid process, but to become really great at dictation, 